Good morning, YouTube. Thank you guys for everybody coming back and checking out the channel. For those of you returning, and welcome to all of you new subscribers. If you guys haven't seen our trailer, you know that uh, Libby and I are up here homesteading off grid, and uh, the challenges that we face being off grid on our own and having to maintain our own road and our own log cabin and power supply, it's very, very real. So thanks for coming along, guys. It's springtime and the road is a mess. Here we go. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. All right, so uh, today we've got to get the skid steer fired up. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that video where I introduce you guys to our ASV120 that uh, I'm doing forestry mulching with, and uh, I use this to plow the snow. You guys have seen those videos. And I'm going to go out there and try and smooth out the road a little bit right now. But it's springtime. If you guys watched last week's video where Olivia and I are out there maintaining the road and trying to get all the water off of it. Um, yeah, it's a problem. There's a couple of really big muddy spots that are I'm going to try and smooth out right now a little bit. And try and, uh, well, let me just come show you. You guys might have seen that video I did where I did the installation on this. Looks just like a flush mount toolbox, yeah? <laughs> Looky there. One thing I need to do that every good operator does is grease his machine. Oh boy. I don't know how many times I've done this. I got out to do my greasing. And uh, look what I forgot, guys. Huh. That would not be good. I lost that once and found it in the snow. <laughs> you guys, this Ryobi electric grease gun is freaking awesome. It makes it so much faster and convenient. I can hold this in those spots that are really tight. I do have a locking tip for it. For those of you that are going to say, hey, get a locking tip. I just haven't put it on yet. I'll leave a, dis a link in the description if you guys are interested in one of these things. Yeah, you know what, Milwaukee is great, but uh, this is about a third of the price and uh, it works just fine for what I'm doing. For those of you that are not familiar with an ASV uh, undercarriage, there are two spots where you have to grease where this thing will actually pivot. So that pivot point, as well as that pivot point right there. This whole undercarriage does move. She's all greased up. Let's get it on. Let's get this bucket attached. There, as you guys can see, this is, this is bad. Olivia's having a hard time getting in here and this is the spot where she's almost getting stuck. You see that this rut, let me give you guys a, an idea. That's how deep this rut is. That's about a foot deep and it goes all the way over there. So there's not gonna be a whole lot that I can do to grade this as far as removing the mud and replacing it because if I disturb it too much it's just gonna make it even worse so those of you guys that have been doing grading a while huh, you guys know mud is no joke now here's a spot right here where there's a low spot where the water can go so I really need to cut like a little bit of a line right here but I'm gonna basically just back drag this whole area and see if I can smooth out the ruts a little bit and then spots like this, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna cut a little line right here with my bucket to try and drain this off before I do anything with this spot. But this spot right here, yeah, I'm just gonna back drag all this and try and smooth it out and see if I can improve it. 
And then uh, this spot on the side of the road it really needs to be a ditch right there, but I uh, can't do anything with that for right now because that's actually a, a road that goes up on some other property. So I'm gonna try and smooth this out right now. guys well I had to get some of the muck out that wasn't gonna smooth out it was just staying muck and you can see this is just it's bad so I tried to get it down to a little bit firmer ground and unfortunately it just makes a bigger hole this is just gonna fill up with water the next rain we have which is tonight and tomorrow so We'll have to see what it does. You can just see the stuff is just goo, slime. So I'm not gonna mess anymore with it. I tried to smooth that out a little bit. Hopefully it's gonna be dry all day today. Hopefully this will dry out a little bit and firm up. And then once uh, once the, the spring rains stop, which is what we're getting right now. Um, can't even unstick my feet. <sighs> yeah, this is the realities of our road. So as soon as this dries out, I'll be grading all this. And I'm going to smooth it all out and get it all level. And then uh, we're going to have to put roadbed fabric on here. So there's a good little topic of discussion. If you guys want to leave me a comment at the bottom, I researched the heck out of this, how to, how to repair your road. Uh, is roadbed fabric necessary or not? And it was split like 50-50 where people were saying, guys were saying, ah, you know what? Just put some good heavy base down and you'll be fine. And then top it with some, you know, three quarter, some smaller rock. You gotta have a good firm base. And then I saw the other 50% saying no. In situations like this, it's absolutely necessary to have roadbed fabric. Because what happens is the rock, well, it's, you can look at it two ways, sinking down or the mud coming up. Right here, there is no rock at all. It is just pure clay and mud. So there's nothing here to support any kind of a road base. And if I put a bunch of rock on this, eventually, I mean, it'll last for a year, but it's gonna start pushing down into the, into the, into the clay, the fines start to come up, the rock disappears. In the past, years and years ago, uh, previous owners had actually put in 12 inch rock and they put it in, a, uh, they said two feet deep in certain sections up here. And in those situations, there's rock, and I'll show that to you. Well, let me show you some of the rock that's still kind of coming up a little bit. There. I don't know if you guys can see that. Those are three inch stones. There's a six inch stone. There's some more stone right here. There's a nice six inch piece right there. There's a big, a big 10 inch piece right down there. So we do have some rock in this area and you can see that's why this section of road, while it's still muddy, some of the fine, all the fines have come up to the top and it's still muddy and mucky. It's still a pretty decent base where right over here, None of that was done this whole stretch. There was no rock put in right here. So it is just an absolute mucky mess. And the water, it doesn't have anywhere to go, really. I was gonna crown this road so the water would come off of it, but that doesn't always help. You gotta have a ditch on the side. So I need to put ditches in along the side of this road for, for proper drainage. Right through here is gonna be some roadbed cloth. And then you guys can see this section right here that had some road base put on it years ago and it has completely gone away. The proper fix for this road, and some of you guys might have different soils, this is just clay, guys. If you've got other soils like sandy soil that drains better, this doesn't drain. So you guys can look at this and see how gooey it is. It is just clay. It needs to have roadbed fabric put on it, impermeable roadbed fabric. Not the permeable stuff, the stuff that keeps the water from coming through. We gotta keep this dry. So the fabric is really expensive, but it's worth it because then you put in six to eight inches of say two and a half inch minus. For those of you guys that don't understand the minus part of it, the minus part of it is the, all the fines mixed in, everything smaller than two and a half inch. Uh, getting this graded out nice and smooth and flat with a layer of roadbed fabric, six inches of six to eight inches of two and a half inch minus on top of it, graded nice and smooth, packed down. This is gonna be a beautiful road. 
yeah, so stay tuned for that, guys. I'm gonna do a little more smoothing a little bit further down here, trying and uh, take out some of these big ruts for that when Olivia comes home uh, from work today. This is what happens with the spring thaw, you guys. It's a freeze thaw. You'll step on this on the top. It's, it's hard and frozen on top because it got cold overnight, but what's underneath is like that, and it's actually thawed out. So the spring thaw all spring long does this to a road that's not been prepared properly. Yeah, see now this section, this section's drying out a little bit. It's not too bad, not as mucky. Pretty good ruts right there though. I'm gonna smooth this out. Okay, I know what a lot of you guys are gonna say already that uh, disturbing this by working it too much is just gonna make it worse. And I agree, because all I'm trying to do is knock down some of the high spots and kind of run over it and squeeze out some of the water and, and pack it a little bit. This, and with a, with a car that's half the weight of my skid steer, it should be able to travel on top of this a little better than just down inside the rut. So we'll see you tonight when Olivia comes home. I'm gonna go down there and start fixing some of these uh, ruts or some of these puddles now and get some drainage going. That was pretty quick work right there. Got a nice little cutout right there for the water to drain out. So yeah, a little easier than a shovel. All right. Well, the rest of this road doesn't look too bad. It's at least uh, tolerable for now. Hey guys, so I did this road this morning and smoothed it all out and graded a little bit. And uh, I'm, this is now this afternoon and I want to see what it looks like. And Olivia's coming home. Are we going to see what it, see how she does? see if I did a good enough job or if it just turned into a big, big mess. Here we go. Looks like it dried out a little bit, but not much. It's, it's about the same and as mucky as it was this morning. So, uh, yeah, I don't know that it really made much difference. Well, this section through here looks a little better, but here's the hole. Did it get a chance to dry out? Yeah, uh, a little bit. It's probably gonna be just as bad. I don't know. We'll see in a few minutes when she pulls in. So far so good. Here's the big hole. See how she does. Holy moly. Woo! <laughs> wow. Yeah, that hole didn't help. All wheel drive, explore. Did all right. I think grading the road helped. Well, what'd you think? A little better, except for the hole. A little better. I thought you were gonna do a 360 in that hole. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh But at least by the gate, that whole section was, the ruts were smoothed out and it stayed pretty firm, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Better. Okay. All right. all right, guys, so taking care of my city girl work out today. She got home a little quicker, a little safer. Car didn't fare so well. Yeah. It's mud season. Guys, thanks for watching. This is a uh, spring thaw in its full 
Fury and uh, off grid. It takes a little bit of money to be off grid sometimes, um, unless you've got a cheap source of rock. You still got to get it here, and you got to get the road graded out with some equipment. So, um, or you're going to be four buying the rest of your life, which, eh, to some, that's not such a bad thing. But uh, I just prefer at least a little bit of rock on there, so I don't have to be wallowing the mud and mud and getting stuck all the time. So, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Uh, I've got some more road work coming up and. Uh, cleaning out some uh, ditches and whatnot. You guys stay tuned for that next week and uh, some more skid steer work coming up. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video.